The Russian aviation market was significantly affected by Western sanctions following the conflict with Ukraine in 2022. This led to difficulties for Russia in purchasing aircraft and essential components from the West. In retaliation, Russia has focused on the development and ramped up producing its domestic aircraft, culminating in the sleek, jet-powered MC-21. Positioned as a flagship rival to Boeing and Airbus, this aircraft has captured the curiosity and strong desire of Russian airlines. So why they want this MC-21 for their fleet? How will Russian airlines exploit it? Let's find out in this episode. Historically, Russia relied heavily on Western countries for its aircraft and components, even for domestically produced planes. However, in 2022, Western sanctions nearly cut off Russia from their economy, prompting Russia to pursue self-sufficiency across various sectors, including aviation. Even before these sanctions, Russia had been striving to develop its commercial aircraft for years. In 2007, the Yakovlev Design Bureau, part of the state-owned Rostock Aviation Group, embarked on a project to create a narrow-body aircraft aimed at replacing outdated Tupolev planes. Originally named Yak-242, it was later rebranded as the Yakovlev MS-21 after receiving domestic certification in 2016. Marked as the MC-21 in the West, two versions of this aircraft were produced, the 200 variant and 300 variant. The MC-21-300 was unveiled on June 8, 2016, in Siberia marking a milestone as one of the first aircraft to utilize out-of-autoclave composite manufacturing technology for its wings. After Russia's and Ukraine's conflict, both actions have made it difficult to access important Western suppliers and led to delays in the aircraft's introduction. Nevertheless, Russia has continued to move forward with its goal of aviation independence. President Vladimir Putin announced plans to build at least 1,000 domestically produced aircraft by 2030. To date, over $10 billion has been spent on the MC-21 program. However, only a few aircraft have been completed. This aircraft has a relatively large order backlog of over 300 units, primarily from Russian airlines. But are these aircraft really good? To answer this question, let's take a look at its specifications. However, before moving on to the next section, please help us reach 10K subscribers by checking if you have pressed the subscribe button yet. The MC-21 aircraft aircraft in two versions. The smaller MC-21-200, seating between 132 and 165 passengers, depending on configuration, and the larger MC-21-300, which can accommodate between 163 and 211 passengers. The 200 variant has a range of approximately 3,500 nautical miles. Positioning it to compete with the Airbus A319, NEO and Boeing 737 MAX 7. Meanwhile, the 300 variant offers a range of about 3,200 nautical miles, aiming to rival the Airbus A320 and Boeing 737 MAX 9 in the mid-market segment. The MC-21 stands out with its innovative wing design, a crucial upgrade to compete with modern Airbus and Boeing models. In 2021, these wings were enhanced with Russian-produced polymer composites using patented vacuum infusion technology, backed by a 4 billion ruble investment approximately $45 million. Composites now constitute 40% of the MC-21 airframe, ensuring a strong and lightweight structure. Regarding the engines, the aircraft was initially equipped with Pratt & Whitney GTF-1400G engines. However, due to Western sanctions limiting access to these engines, Rostec, a Russian state corporation, had to find domestic alternatives. The replacement engine chosen was the PD-14 turbofan engine produced by Aviad Vigadl, which was first received on January 20th, 20. Although Russia has taken a bold step to flood its aviation market with hundreds of domestically produced aircraft by 2030, there are still emerging issues that need to be addressed. These are significant challenges for this aircraft. Firstly, there's the issue of production. Russia and its airlines still need to find ways to maintain the safe operation of their existing aircraft. Reports indicate that due to the inability to easily access parts for foreign aircraft, some airlines have had to dismantle important components from suspended aircraft to replace those in active aircraft. This has led to dozens of safety incidents and is likely to continue as long as the sanctions persist. However, there are also reports that Russia has managed to import some counterfeit components for the airline's aircraft. They have also had to use loopholes to import critical parts through countries such as Turkey, the UAE, and Tajikistan, which do not support Western sanctions. 
Nevertheless, this move has been very costly and is unlikely to solve the current major problem. Secondly, another significant issue is the certification of new aircraft like the MC-21-300. It was denied European certification on March 14, 2022, and there is currently no indication that this decision will be reversed anytime soon, especially while Russian military forces remain in Ukraine. The lack of certification limits the aircraft's ability to operate in international markets, further complicating Russia's efforts to become self-sufficient in the aviation industry. If Russia can overcome these major challenges in producing the MC-21, the aircraft could prove to be a strong competitor in the global aviation market. Why say that? To highlight this, let's make a comparison. A common comparison is between the Yakovlev MC-21 and the Boeing 737 MAX, particularly the MAX 9 model. Recent incidents, such as the Alaska Airlines MAX 9 door latch incident on January 20, 24, have once again raised safety concerns regarding Boeing's MAX aircraft series. While most of the grounded Boeing aircraft have returned to service, these events have cast some doubt on the future of this aircraft model. The uncertain environment surrounding the MAX 9 could provide an opportunity for the MC-21. Although Western Airlines may hesitate to include it in their fleets, the aircraft could serve as a viable option for airlines in other markets looking to expand their narrowbody fleets. Another aspect that should be compared is cost. The MC-21-310 is reported to have a price of around $91 million, significantly lower than the nearly $130 million price tag of the MAX-9. Additionally, the CEO of Rostec has indicated that Russian airlines could purchase it for as little as $37 million. Next. When comparing cabin design, the MC-21 offers more cabin space than the MAX-9, a feature that, while not decisive, can add extra comfort for passengers and may influence the decisions of some airlines. Although the Boeing aircraft has more seats than the MC-21, with a maximum of 220 seats compared to 211 seats for the Russian aircraft, both aircraft have similar range capabilities, typically around 3,300 nautical miles although the MAX 9 can extend up to 3,550 nautical miles under optimal conditions. This Russian aircraft stands out with its clean, modern design, particularly in its wing structure, which could influence future aircraft designs across the industry. These advantages suggest that despite the barriers, the Russian aircraft has the potential to make its outstanding position in certain segments of the global aircraft market. Which aircraft do you think is better? Comment number one if it's MC-21. Otherwise, number two if you like 737 MAX. The MC-21 is a potential aircraft. It's true because it has many opportunities in both domestic and international markets. Currently, it has secured over 300 orders, primarily from Russian airlines, with Aeroflot leading the charge. In 2022, Aeroflot, Russia's largest airline, placed a substantial order for 339 domestic aircraft, including 210 of the new generation Yakovlev MC-21, alongside other Russian models like the Sukhoi Superjet, SSJ-100, and Tupolev-214. Valued at approximately $1 billion, this order is set to double Aeroflot's fleet size and signifies a significant commitment to the MC-21, which Aeroflot plans to elevate as its flagship aircraft by 2030. Deliveries are scheduled to commence in the fourth quarter of 2024. Aeroflot's order highlights a robust domestic market for this aircraft, buoyed by significant government backing and ambitions for aviation self-sufficiency. Yet, expanding this success globally will hinge on overcoming challenges, casting some uncertainty on the MC-21's international prospects, though it remains a compelling topic in aviation. Aeroflot's substantial order underscores their confidence in this new aircraft. Its future success will be closely watched, particularly its performance with Aeroflot. Time will tell how it unfolds. The MC-21310, with a range of about 3,300 nautical miles, suits well for intra-European and regional flights across Russia. However, its international reach may be constrained to neighboring countries without a longer range variant. The 400 variant speculated to accommodate around 260 passengers and offer a range of nearly 5,500 nautical miles could enable transcontinental flights, expanding the aircraft's market potential. Such enhancements would boost the appeal of the MC-21 series globally, 
positioning it for more direct competition with long-range aircraft from other major manufacturers. Russian registered aircraft are currently barred from entering the airspace of most Western nations, but can still operate over roughly 60% of the world's landmass. While non-Russian airlines may tread cautiously due to sanctions, the MC-21 offers Russian carriers a notable chance to replace Airbus and Boeing models. Viewed as equally, if not more efficient than its rivals, it is bolstered by significant government subsidies. With production capacity constrained, it appears every Russian airline is eager to procure this aircraft. Although Russia has taken a bold step to flood its aviation market with hundreds of domestically produced aircraft by 2030, there are still emerging issues that need to be addressed. These are significant challenges for this aircraft. What do you think about this Russian aircraft? In your opinion, what does Russia need to do for this aircraft to better access international markets? Please leave your comments below. Thank you and see you next time.